Back in February of 2020, I released a video of a build project I called the Slimline Speaker. Uh, it's a small three-way speaker designed to be very capable in sound reproduction over a wide range of the frequency pass band from roughly 35 to 25,000 hertz uh, to be elegant and easily fit into most interior environments without looking like huge totem poles dominating your living space. Uh, check the link to that video in the card appearing top right of this video now or in the description below. I also released build plans for these and they have proven to be very popular uh, with many builders having done an absolutely stunning job of their builds and have also been very happy with the performance. These are just a few examples. However, about a month ago I had to remove the build plans from my shop since the manufacturer of the Fountech 3 inch driver used in the build is in the process of relocating their factory and are unable to provide suppliers with this driver. And that stock has been sold out everywhere. Uh, there is also no guarantee that it will ever be back in production again so I have decided to source a suitable replacement. So as I now go through the process of removing the Fountech from my build, let me tell you more about the upgrade. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. If you're a creator who wants to explore new skills, deepen some of those existing passions and get lost in creativity, Skillshare is for you. Topics on Skillshare range from animation, creative writing, film and video, fine arts, graphic design, illustration, music and so much more. One topic I have been delving into lately is e-commerce and Tracy Wallace, Editor-in-Chief at Big Commerce, has a very insightful class on how to start your own online business and look for that niche in the market that can bring you success. I also recently took a class by Mario Stanisescu on Acoustics 101 and I've now moved on to Acoustics 201 where he covers everything on loudspeaker measurements. I highly recommend this class if you want to learn how to design and build your own speakers. Classes are curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. So go check it out now. The replacement driver I sourced is the Tangband W3-881SJ. It's a 3 inch full range driver that features a powerful uh, neodymium motor, cast aluminium basket and a PPM or polypropylene mica cone with Santoprene surround. The driver is much better build quality than the Fountech and that's also a bit more expensive. This is not a drop in replacement however and I had to redesign the crossover completely but managed to reduce the component parts count a bit which in turn compensates for the added expense of the new Tangband 3 inch driver. Everything else remains the same but I also have to adjust the hole size for the 3 inch driver which is a few millimeters larger in diameter. So I need to make a jig to router the hole bigger which you will see shortly and also mask the front tweeter hole so not to get dust inside the enclosure. Here you see the 3 inch tank band driver for the first time and it really is very well designed and put together. The cone has a slight gold color to it uh, that also looks good and a bit different from the norm. Using some offcuts for the jig, I can mark out the width of the battle and write out the new size of the tank band driver before cutting the hole with the router and straight cut bit. The sides of the jig are just fixed in place with screws, pre-drilling to make sure the plywood does not split. I can then slide the jig over the baffle and line up the new hole with the old. A trim router with a flush trim bit is set to depth and I can cut the new hole.
I'm using a half round file to bevel the inside hole for the driver to make sure that it seals well. Since the new driver has a small lip on the inside diameter that is slightly larger than the previous one. Perfect fit. Before I can model a new crossover, I mount all the drivers back into the enclosure and take the necessary test measurements. This resulted in a model crossover that is fairly simple and again the side firing with a running full range, the tweeter and mid crosses over at around 4.3 kHz, the mid driver also rolls off with a shallow high pass at roughly 800 Hz. Impedance looks very good and gives us a nominal 4 ohm load across the board and never dips below that. Last steps is to assemble all the components on the new crossover board and solder all the wires into place. The crossover board is mounted in the enclosure and the dampening material is inserted. Finally, the back panel is screwed on and we are almost ready to give these a listen. I am super happy with this upgrade and the new tank band driver does not disappoint. Uh, how does this compare with the previous iteration? Well it sounds just as good. There really is not much between the two. A build plan for this build will again be available on my website at soundblab.net. So head over and go check it out as well as many other build plans to previous projects. I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Please subscribe to the channel, press the like button and ring the bell to get notified when I release my next video. Uh, last but not least, a huge thanks to all my patrons and YouTube members for their support. I release behind the scene updates to them every month as well as discounts on my build plans. So if you want to support my channel, please press the join button below or head over to the Patreon page to become a patron. Even though these speakers are very small for a three-way design and can fit into tight spaces, my suggestion will always be to pull them out into the room, as you can see from the positioning here in the sound demo in my room. A neat trick is to mark the position of the speakers with masking tape and then you can easily push them back against the wall after the listening session and then move them back into position later, lining them up with your marks if you want to listen to them again. A reminder, the sound demo is best listened to through a pair of good headphones, but will never be an accurate representation of how these sound in real life. Thank you everyone, until next time, adios, let's have a listen. Take it. I didn't know what it would cost me 